And what I'd like to do is first of all thank you all for coming and thank Dr. Phillips and Dr. Cameron for being here. Uh, and the other thank you and uh, the one that we really want to thank is the Candlewood Inn. They have made this wonderful space available for us at no charge. And it's just wonderful. And we will be presenting them with a proclamation from the town of Brookfield uh, as a thanks. This is the second time they've done that in the last couple of years, and it's just great. Well, thanks for coming, and I'll turn it over to Russ. Good evening. I, too, would like to thank the um, folks um, here at the uh, Candlewood Inn. You know, it's really a terrific thing that they do for us. Uh, my name is uh, Russ Cornelius. I'm a Rotarian from the uh, Brookfield Club and a founding member of the Brookfield Lyme Disease Task Force. I'm the Brookfield representative to the Fairfield County Municipal Deer Management Alliance also. Um, welcome to the October 2009 Lyme Lecture here at Candlewood Inn in Brookfield, Connecticut. This lecture is brought to you by five of Connecticut's nearby Rotary Clubs, uh, Brookfield, Danbury, uh, Newtown, and Ridgefield Clubs. Uh, and we also partner uh, with the Brookfield Lyme Disease Task Force, the Newtown Lyme Disease Task Force, and the Ridgefield Lyme Disease Task Force. Without the efforts of these folks, this would really be an empty hall. Uh, everyone participating tonight has volunteered his or her time and expertise for which we're very grateful. Our featured speakers tonight are, are Daniel Cameron, Dr. Daniel Cameron, current president of the International Lyme and Associated Disease Society, and also joining us tonight is Dr. Stephen Phillips, past president of the International Lyme and Associated Disease Society. Both doctors specialize in treating folks with a tick-borne disease. Between the doctors, we will have an award presentation you know, uh, to some folks that have been very helpful you know, uh, in the education effort for Lyme disease. I'm from the town of Brookfield. In 2008, you know, Maggie Shaw, Jerry Murphy, and I founded the Brookfield Lyme Disease Task Force, which has expanded to more than a half dozen folks many of whom contracted a tick-borne disease nearby. Uh, let me give you an executive summary of what we've been up to and what we've accomplished uh, to date. We've established a town website uh, on the brookfield.org um, uh, site. Our schools have been given very special attention. Educational material from the Lyme Disease Association has been given to children to take home to their parents. The time for Lyme curriculum is in use in the Brookfield Public Schools to teach uh, children in grades K, 3rd, 6th, and ninth about ticks and about Lyme disease prevention. Educational Lyme videos have been shown on the educational channel. Uh, Brookfield joined uh, the Fairfield County Municipal Deer Management Alliance to learn how other towns have dealt with the deer Lyme uh, tick problem. We've undertaken a controlled hunt to manage the deer population in town because we know that in over 90% of the cases, a tick gets its large blood meal that it needs to reproduce from a deer. So deer, lime, and ticks go hand in hand. As the deer population grows, so does the tick population. Our deer population in town is about 63 per square mile. If the deer population was managed as it has been in the past, you know, uh, 10 per square mile is the target, the tick-borne disease problem would end. That's our goal. You know, perhaps some of you have seen the Kirby Stafford video that I was showing uh, earlier in the evening. You know, uh, he's our uh, Connecticut expert on uh, deer, ticks, and Lyme. And um, there was a minute and a half presentation that if some of you would like to see. Deer are important hosts for the tick. The adult tick feeds primarily on white-tailed deer. Um, deer can support many ticks feeding on the animal. Um, there are other hosts that the ticks can feed on, but ecologically they don't play as important a role. Uh, everything from cats, dogs, coyotes, possums, they're not as abundant as deer. Some of the animals can groom the ticks off of themselves, but they just don't contribute that many ticks into the environment. And so probably about 90-95% of all of the fed female ticks that are laying eggs are coming off of white-tailed deer. And so deer are key to how many you know, ticks you have uh, out there. When you reduce the deer population, and numerous studies have shown this, you will reduce the tick population, and therefore your risk of coming across a tick. 
if you reduce the number of ticks enough, you decrease your chances of coming across an infected tick. If the tick population drops below uh, a, a certain threshold, you won't even have the ticks feeding sufficiently on the mice that carry the Lyme disease spirochetes to maintain the transmission between the ticks and the mice. And you can actually break the disease cycle as well. In Rotary, uh, I'm also a Rotarian, all significant events begin with one person's idea in one local Rotary Club. In 1979, a man who belonged to a Rotary Club in the Philippines recognized the need to vaccinate local children against polio. His efforts spread <clears throat> and developed into a five-year plan to deliver the polio vaccine to six million children in the Philippines. Rotary's Polio Plus program has since expanded to cover the entire globe, and I'm sure many of you have heard of the Polio Plus effort. Bill Gates has contributed you know, <clears throat> about $350 million to help Rotary do its job. Um, the purpose of this is so that none of us present will suffer the crippling polio disease that afflict, afflicted some of our parents. Neither will future generations that follow us. Polio exists only in four countries and will soon be eradicated. We're hoping, uh, we had hoped that it would be gone by now, but we're looking now at a horizon of about five or ten years. Uh, for this worldwide effort, you can thank <clears throat> a Rotarian. In a similar manner, one Rotarian, Richard Benson, recognized the growing threat of tick-borne diseases right here in Connecticut. As a Rotary District Governor, he focused on the need for education and awareness of Lyme and other diseases spread by tick bites. He distributed information and videos throughout the lower half of Connecticut and cities and towns with Rotary Clubs who, who shared the message. From the year 2000 to the present, our Rotary District has continued its efforts to educate and bring awareness of the threat of tick-borne diseases. A first aid kit for tick removal has been developed and distributed by Rotary, and very recently CVS stores, so that you might remove a tick properly, identify it, and store it for testing. The kit contains instructions on how to get the tick tested for Lyme at no charge by the state of Connecticut, but you know, this is a service for Connecticut residents only, so you know, that's something you want to be aware of. This testing helps quantify the spread of Lyme disease and points out areas that may be considered hot spots for Lyme. Statewide DPH results of this tick testing shows that close to 30% of the ticks in, across the state test positive for Lyme, you know, given the DPH uh, testing techniques. But you know, in comparison, a local tick drag in Newtown revealed this percentage to be much higher in the range of 88 to 96%. The number of ticks is way up also. And um, babesiosis was also present in 30% of the same ticks. The state um, uh, sponsors really no plans to test ticks for other diseases. And there's no state plans to educate children or adults to manage the deer which spread the tick-borne diseases. And I'd like you to quote me on this. Long after we've forgotten about bird flu, swine flu, that is H1N1, most of us residents in Connecticut will still have tick-borne diseases in our backyard. Rotarians have led the way in the past and will continue to educate and build awareness of these tick-borne diseases. But unlike the polio uh, vaccine effort, Rotary cannot launch a plan to distribute a vaccine for tick-borne diseases because no such vaccine exists. We do what we can. Now, tonight we're bringing information about the problem to you with us today are local vendors who may help you address the deer and tick problem on your property. Their expertise has been applied to local schools and municipal areas where people congregate out of doors.